tuning in to Chaos Culture Radio. Dropping knowledge in the studio, you already know. Whites always utilize the police force. Black people barely utilize the police force. So there's something wrong here because we are the one that's paying the most of the taxpayer dollars that we give most money to the police force. So I think we should be able to use the police force more often than the whites. But the whites been using it more and more. We've been using less and less. And I want to know the reason why. Um, I know Muhammad can speak about that. I can speak about that. Of course. And, and you can speak about that because we've been through a lot on that. And me personally, I used to remember if there was a discrepancy in the ghetto, uh-huh. I could vi- I could vivid vividly remember this. And I don't know. And then I'm talking about eight, I'm talking about 91. Uh-huh. If there was a fight going to happen, there'll be an old guy sitting across the street smoking a cigarette. And if it's a scrap or somebody pulled out a gun, the old guy get up and walk across the street and mediate the situation before police was being called. People's mm. houses was not getting broken into because everybody knew each other on the block. Mm. Somebody did break into somebody's house. We knew who did it, and we find who did it, and then that person would have to compensate that person who did it. So wow. I think I think from my personal experiences, since we have an issue where a lot of the police officers do not look like us, or you know, a lot of them don't stay in the neighborhood, so they don't understand us from a cultural aspect. And you know, what I mean, we 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 tend to have to try to police ourselves. Mm. That's my opinion on that. I feel we have to police ourselves. You can call the police. You're gonna have to call the police. Let's not get it twisted. You're gonna be in certain situations where police gonna have to get called. You know what I mean? Certain things are going to be out of your pay grade or out of your mechanics. You don't got a hammer on you. And plus, you know what I mean? I'm going to be honest with you. I'm a convicted felon. I can't hold guns. I'm not even allowed to have a gun. Right. So that, that, that strike me out from bearing arms. So with that being said, if I can't bear arms and I got something going, I got to get on that 911 and start putting that, pushing that panic. But hey, y'all better come up here. They trimming over here. Yeah. Mm. Well, I have a question for y'all before I even uh, answer your question. Yeah. What is Jay Z? Is he ghetto? Is he middle class or is he filthy rich? Well, you talking about the old Jay Z or the, the now Jay Z? Hey, Jay Z is Jay Z. I mean, you can break it down. Whatever how, you can answer the question. However you I, 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 okay. Back then, I used to. I, you could say he he was nigger rich. But I could say through his investments and his business deals, I could say he's on his road to be wealthy. He's not wealthy yet. Right. I'm on that. I'm on that definition. Okay. But now, is he worth a million? Is he worth two million? Is he worth 500 million? Almost 800 million? The dude is worth a lot of money. Yeah. So yeah. My, my point is, at what point does do you become a different type of individual with this we can't hear you Muhammad you covering the mic yeah my point is if once you make a certain amount of money you can rap about the products all you want you're not going back there and if yeah. you do and if you do like C murder did you're gonna wind up commit murder and going to jail yourself yeah so yeah master P don't live in the products no more no you do not okay and why should he he, he, he's got all the money and he could buy the projects. See yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. And, P, and P, as far as I'm concerned, he did it right. Uh, Jay-Z, he's got all this money. So I don't think he lives, what's the name of the projects he's from in Brooklyn? Uh, Marcy. He ain't, Marcy. He ain't going back to Marcy. And, and why should he? He owns freaking, what is, well, at one time he owned the, the Nets. I don't know if he still yeah. does. But, okay. I'm saying all this to say, after, you, you start off in this world as a, as a baby. Like the Quran says, you come into this world complete, you're incomplete. You have two eyes, a nose, and a mouth, but you're, still, you're not fully developed as a man. And you need time to grow and develop wisdom. And as you get that wisdom, hopefully you get wealth, you get a family, you get to see life. 
and you you ain't gonna keep seeing things the same way you did when you was a kid. I know I don't. I mean, mm. I ain't gonna be here forever. When I was a kid, I thought I was gonna, or young in my twenties, I thought I'd be here forever. I mean, I couldn't even think about what life would be like past thirty. Never mind being fifty. But mm. I know now I ain't gonna be here forever, and I want to live the good life before I go. Mm. I want to be black and be proud of that, and live the good life. Praise be to and Allah. I, I I was a baby in the projects, but. I ain't going back there to live. I live in a house, a nice house. Mm. My fa- I got white neighbors. They're, they're like, how these niggas even live in this house? But mm-hmm. that's their problem. Understand? And I have a place for my son to come, um, my stepchildren to come. Y'all could come chill over here if you want. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> now, I don't think I, you could have done that when I was in the shelter in Boston. And ready to stab a nigga because he's kicking me in my head trying to get to his locker. So now that I'm a man, I got property. I have a family I got to worry about. If if someone touches my my stepdaughter, I'm supposed to uh, not call the police. If if someone uh, does something to my son, either I'm going to hurt the man or the police are going to have to do their job. Yeah. So. A Jay Z and whoever has reached the top. Okay, I'm gonna put it. I'm gonna break it down to you like this. I'm a young FOI. It's in DC. I used to go to Howard, but I tried to be a big man and move off campus, which was a big mistake. Now I'm in the hood next to the strip joint on Georgia Avenue, living around the corner on a place street called Older Street. And I used to see the mm-hmm. drug dealers. Matter of fact, they used to hustle so hard in DC. I used to see the mothers hustling with their sons in DC. And it used to be this one family. It was a mother and two sons. They used to hustle in front of this Chinese restaurant. And he used to be this little midget. He looked like the dude from uh, Ghetto Boys. What was his name? He passed away. Who? Who's the, who's the uh, Bushwick Bill? Bushwick Bill. He looked like Bushwick Bill. He'd be like, yo, what's going on, brother? What you doing today? You got one of them papers for me? Okay. All this stuff would be happening. And now I'm losing my train of thought. I was talking about hustling. Oh, okay. So the, the woman who used to hustle, she, she used to tell me you should go to school. You shouldn't be hanging out around here. Something bad could happen to you. Now, that was near my apartment when I was a Howard student. Then when I became an FOI, the moss was on the other side of DC and I saw that woman's son. Matter of fact, he pulled out a gun on my fellow FOI in front of the moss. And I was trying to say, brother, remember me? I just talked to you and your mother. I mean, I don't know if he was on drugs, he was spazzing out. He was holding the gun, the brothers was ready to rush him. I said, hold up, I know this brother, I know this brother. And so the brothers wanted to do him in. And you know what the captain said? The captain who was notorious for fighting drug dealers, and he was a legend in the final call for fighting the, he, he was, okay, I hate watching the Y when they got that fake Muslim in there. Okay, Mon- Monroe, Mano, I can't even say his name right. But they got a fake Muslim in the Y. Huh? Brother Muzon or something like that. Muzon, yeah, that fake yeah. dude, okay. The real Muslims I know, we was the ones, I mean, I ain't got nothing against my brothers now who sold drugs, they did what they had to do, but we was the one fighting the drug boys, okay. So this captain, named Captain Akil, who I have the utmost love and respect for, he was legendary. And when he saw what was happening, I couldn't believe what he said. He said, call the police. I said, what? <laughs> I, think, I, think you the I was like, foreign. It was foreign to you. Like, what? I was like, I thought we'd do our own work on these streets. Brother Captain, he said, man, call the police. We ain't got no time for this. So, when he, but he was a mature black man who knew himself. And when you get to that point, you ain't got time for the foolishness, man. So, right. Now, now there's one exception to this rule. Yeah. One exception. So, if you choose a certain type of lifestyle, again, going back to them codes of conduct, you got to live by those codes. So, if you're in the street, well, I don't think that's in your best interest to be calling the police. Because when the brothers find out, now you breaking those rules. But once you say, hey, look, I'm not in this life no more. I got a family to take care of. Like Brown said earlier, I'm a civilian. Yep. You got to follow the rules of being civilized. <laughs> That's all. And you mature. You get older and wiser. But that, exactly. don't make you no that don't make you no punk. It just makes you wiser. Like you said, Muhammad, you got to be able to use common sense. Like um, when it comes, for example, of... Um, when you're an adult, you have a thing like an adult. So I'm not going to sit around getting into a, a confrontation with somebody when I know that I'm paying somebody to watch over me. So 
The police is someone we're paying for to watch over us. We right. pay them with our tax dollars. Thank you. Thank you. So at the end of the day, they work for us. I came. They work for us. They do. Bro, mm -hmm. You said the key phrase, man. The key for they work for us. We pay their salary. So they should do what we need them to do. Facts. But that's that's all I'm saying. Now don't that don't mean go say you the exception to the rule is if you're in the street, you know, you gotta live by those rules. Don't come back exactly. Mm -hmm. And try to flip it on your boys now because you can't face the time. You chose that life. You got to. Yeah, now that's life. snitching. Yeah, that's I, snitching. Yeah. I didn't want to say it, but yeah. Now that's snitching. <laughs> no, no, we're going we gonna to say how it is. That's snitching. That's a rat. If you, if, <laughs> if you get involved in a criminal activity and you get caught with your homies, but you want to do lesser time and you did that, you're a rat. But if you are a civilian, never sold a bag or even moved a snowflake. And you see, <laughs> this is, you see Mrs. Johnson house across the street getting broken into, nigga, you supposed to call. Listen, I, I'm an ex-street nigga. I'm calling the police on niggas. Fact. I'm not fighting with you. I'm not pulling out no gun. I'm going to pull out my phone. Hey, come get them. <laughs> hey, up here, if you sell it, listen, you sell a bag of weed on my block, I'm calling the police. I like the yeah. way you think. No, but we think that we need to get to that level at that point. That's the yeah. only way it could better our community because our community is very impoverished. L listen, a lot a, of this, some, yes, you're right. Listen, I'm a 40 year old year old man. I can't abide by street nigga um, pathologies anymore. I'm 40. Well, I agree. I'm right. I, I'm old enough to be somebody daddy. <laughs> you're right. What, you, you know what I mean? What's somebody daddy hugging the block saying? Y'all niggas better not go snitch out here. Hell no, nah. nigga. I'm calling. I'm calling them crackers on you. And I hope them. I hope they put your ass in jail. And I'm testifying. And what you <laughs> know about? Hey, and that, that movie by Chris Rock. I think I love my wife. Yeah. Try to make up an excuse. That scene. Try to make up an excuse why he uh wasn't going to eat dinner with his wife or why he mm. came home late or something like that because he was messing around on her. Yeah. And he was like, "Yeah, I got into a fight with this dude. And I was, he was tussling, tossing, turning." She said, "You're a grown ass man. We talking about you was out there fighting." <laughs> <laughs> After a certain yeah. point, we ain't got time for all that. We ain't, we ain't you do. You don't have time for it. Yep. You do we, not have time for it. You know what I mean? You elevate. And it, yeah. And I think this type of education the black community needs. We don't have this education. That's why there's a lot of rampants going on in our community because we we never been taught these things because our parents never taught us this thing or their parents before them never taught us this thing. So now, since because I'm the young one out of all you guys, I think you already yeah. know, Hakeem always schooled me in the knowledge yep. of our yep. law and stuff okay. like that in the Nation of Islam. But he always tell me like you gotta you gotta do for self. You have to learn more and more and keep educating yourself. That's it. Because after him, I have to keep on the legacy. After you Man. guys are going, I gotta keep on the legacy. So facts. I have to know this type of information. Facts, facts. And and you can get a young brother that's under you, and you can tell him, hey, brother, that's not the way to go. Now the main point, you're right. The main point I want to get the whole focal point on why if black people should call police. Uh huh. And, it, and this is the point we need to hone on this. So we won't draw this out. Now, you've seen the interactions with the police and black people. And sometimes when we call the police, we sometimes become the victim. Now, there's a point that I'm trying to get. There's something called rules of engagement. I learned this at a young age. Mm. You feel me? And Muhammad, you, you know this. I learned this at a young age. And mind you, old man Willie taught me this. I, I'm talking about an older dude, 54. Right. 19, 1994. Pulled me over to the side. He say, he said, a lot of these young niggas that be getting killed by the police, they they have this built up aggression. They don't understand the rules of engagement. It's not street niggas that are getting killed. Let's get something straight. It's a lot of dudes who are emotional that are getting killed who don't understand the rules of engagement with your enemy. You know what I'm trying mm. to say? I've always I've been locked up before. I've been arrested. I've been accused. I always put you know what I mean. It's a rules of engagement. You got to make sure you know how to deal with these people when you're under a terrorist attack. I'm calling this, I'm calling it that because if you're dealing with them folks, you got to be polite. You got to speak well. And when people ask you them questions, you you do what you got to do. Right. So that, that, that that's the point that I want to get on that. And the other thing I want to add to that, which is uh, there's always exceptions to the rule. Now, yeah. there are cases where you have corrupt and crooked police yeah. who not only they're not doing their job, they are there to terrorize 
and to oppress. So we're not doing business as usual with you types. Matter of fact, if necessary, we'll take the law into our own hands because I'm not going to let you stand here and watch you kill another black man or woman or child. As a matter of fact, I'm going to make a citizen's arrest or defend myself like it says in the Holy Quran, Surah 2, 191, we fight with those who fight with us. But outside mm-hmm. of that, outside of that, I respect you. I respect your badge. But like the brother just said on this line, y'all work for us. I don't work for you. And if I'm not breaking no law, I'm respectful of you and who you are as a person. Don't try to come uh, do something to me that's not even legal. You're just trying to push me around because you think you can do that because you have a badge and a gun. But the law, which is in a book, rules what you can and cannot do. And if I know the law or get someone who does, you got to bow down, not me. And that's mm. what I don't understand. Well, I do understand, but I don't like it. I don't, I don't like the way our people, we bow to the cops when, like you said, brother, they work for us. Now, the only, the, to, to be fair to us as a people, we have been the people who, who were slaves. We were whooped, whipped. Mm-hmm. We were castrated. Uh, we were labeled three-fifths a person. So there's a his, history as to why we don't like to deal with the police because we was a contraband. They stole us then try to make it legal like what they was doing was right and exact when it wasn't. And the slave catches, the Fugitive Slave Act. I mean, we go north and they're going to bring us back south. So we have it inbred in us not to want to deal with the authorities because of our history here and we don't know who we are. But now once we know who we are, if we was the kings and queens of Africa, the police would be under us and they would do what we asked them to do and we wouldn't think nothing of it because they are of us and they're part of our society. And like you said, we're paying for them to do that job. Yeah. But we think this ain't our country. We second, well, some of us think this, we always second. So we think it's our country, but we're supposed to always be second class. No, we first class, like PE said, we the first world. That's how you got to think. And we're going to make them do what we want them to do because we are the law. Mm. Powerful. Yeah. Powerful. <laughs> Yeah, that, no, that, that was some knowledge. That was some knowledge. That was some knowledge, boy. That was like right there. That was you dropped the mic. <laughs> no, but he, he he's telling the truth. But I'm just saying because yeah. the situation with this, the whole police situation is going to keep going until we start understanding, hey, we need to pause and start to educate people the rules of engagement and start to educate the police their rules of engagement. You know what I'm saying? Because I think there's a miscommunication <laughs> that's going there. You know what I'm saying? So for us to come to a common ground. That's right, brother. No, no, definitely. You know what I'm saying? And and and, and that and that, and that's but then I'm gonna give my last word for a lot of you goofy niggas. If you get pulled over the police, calm your motherfucking ass down. Make sure you get your ass home tonight. Mm. Yes, sir. That cracker got a gun on his hip. You ain't got no strap on you and you ain't going to bust nothing. So come, go home and file a complaint and do a lawsuit. You can't yeah. do that if you did. And, that, and that, that's really what I'm saying on that tip. Until you're ready to kill something, you ain't going to kill nothing. So shut up and go home and take care of your kids. Am I wrong, people? Oh, you're telling the truth. Real talk. 100. And what I can't even say, I can back, pick it back on what he's saying. He's saying the absolute truth. You got to know the rules of engagement. Learn how to communicate yourself very well and to learn to not be confrontational. Just be yourself and relax, breathe and while you're engaging with the client. Always keeping in mind they work for you. When you know somebody's working for you, you actually have that some, that feel of relaxation. Like you, it's like it's not a forced thing. It's like you know, like at the end of this person is like my servant. So that person's your servant. Treat them as such, your servant. No, no, definitely. I mean, and that's all I got to say, Muhammad. You got any last words? Hey, the cops are the same as the bus driver. You just put the money in the bucket, and he got to do his job. And they, they <laughs> out of our <laughs> this situation. And we're going to end it like that. Kaya Coaster Radio, uh, out. Man, I just appreciate y'all just listening. Stay tuned for the next episode. <laughs>